What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and we're back with another episode of Building on a Budget. In today's video, we're going to be doing Phantom Knights. Now, if you guys are new here, Building on a Budget is a series that I do where we build decks as competitively as possible for under a hundred dollars. Now that price includes both the cost of the cards as well as the shipping fee because realistically when you're buying cards, there's going to be a shipping fee and I want to incorporate that so you guys know exactly what you're going to be paying for the deck that I'm going to be showing off. So if you guys do enjoy these building on a budget videos make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one we do deck profiles combo videos product openings dual replays all that good stuff we upload five days a week here on Spanko so make sure you guys are subscribed we're almost at 7,000 subscribers with that being said I don't want to keep you guys too long so let's get into the deck profile okay so as always just before we get into the deck profile here is the total cost of the items after optimizing the cart the total cost of this entire deck it's a 42 card main deck it's not 40 it's 42 which is why you guys see here we actually have 57 total items that's 57 cards 42 in the main deck 15 in the extra deck and it's a total of 59 dollars that's crazy and this deck is really competitive you guys are going to see obviously the first thing you guys see here is scythe so this deck is really competitive to get it down to 59 dollars is insane you even get hand traps in here which i'm going to show you guys when we get into the deck profile so this is a total with shipping it's 59 dollars so here's a quick look at the deck profile you guys can see it's 42 cards in the main deck but you guys can also see we're playing some of the most broken strategies in today's format that you can abuse and it's all on a budget which is the best part about this you guys can even see that we're playing ghost ogre and ghost bell so we're playing good relevant hand traps which is really cool because in a lot of other building on a budget decks it's really hard to fit in hand traps and Technically, you guys are going to see that I can fit more stuff within the $100 budget in here. However, I just wanted to keep it as low as possible. So $60 is pretty insane. $59 technically, right? So we're going to get started off here. And we're starting off with three Phantom Knights as Torn Scales. This is honestly your best normal summon in the deck outside of Tour Guide. But Torn Scales is also really good because even if you're not normaling him with your first turn hand, you're always going to get to Torn Scales and he's going to let you combo off. So this card is insanely powerful. Have to play three of him. Three of the Silent Boots, two of the Ancient Cloak, one Ragged Gloves, as well as one one stained greaves this is the best pk lineup you guys can play silent boots is really good because it's a special summon for you so it's an extender but it also searches a trap card from your deck which is really nice because you're going to be searching that fog blade which is another form of disruption then the other best normal summon of the deck is the tour guide we're playing three tour guide of the underworld and then we're playing one graph as well as one seer now you guys can see and if you guys haven't played pk before pk is one of those decks that's just rank three level three spam right so for that reason you do want to play as many level three extenders as possible as many ways to get level three on the boards but you guys are going to notice here that we're not actually playing the level three danger monsters those cards are extremely powerful but they are pretty expensive in themselves and you don't really want to add budget to this so what you want to do here instead is play the ba stuff but also play a little psychic engine so we're playing two psychic wielder as well as two psychic tracker and then we're also playing i'm just going to skip this real quick we're also playing three ghost ogre and snow rabbit and that's going to come up in a little bit i'll explain it but for the level three extenders of course like i said we're playing two wielder two tracker and then we're playing two kage mucha knight kage mucha knight is extremely powerful because it just helps you special summon anytime you summon any level three monster so you normal summon your torn scales you can special summon this you normal summon tour guide you can special summon this so this card is insanely powerful it's a really good extender for the deck but why is ghost ogre specifically very important so first things first we're playing six hand traps we're playing three ghost ogre and three ghost spell for multiple reasons the really cool thing about these hand traps is they all have like multi reasons to be playing them which is really cool so the first thing that i really like about these cards is ghost Ghost Bell is really good in today's format, of course. DD Crow is pretty expensive, but Ghost Bell is just a really good card against Tier Limits and a lot of other decks as well. Even in the Sprite matchup, if you think about that one, you guys can Ghost Bell the Frog, and then they have a hard time making Totally Awesome. So this card can be extremely powerful. Ghost Ogre is also pretty good in today's format as well. But Ghost Ogre specifically, it being a Psychic is insane because you guys are going to see the spell cards that we're playing. We're playing three Emergency Teleport. So the really cool thing about Emergency Teleport is essentially an extender for you, right? You can either summon your Wielder, you can either Either summon your tracker because they're both level three psychics but you can also summon ghost ogre now what does that mean it's one really good because it's an extender like i said earlier you can use ghost ogre as an extender if you already have like a wielder or a tracker in hand but the really cool thing about e telly is if you can full combo without having to use the e telly you can just set the e telly if you're going first that means you can pass your board on whatever the board is you make plus an e telly set now on your opponent's turn you can activate the e telly summon the ghost ogre now why would you do that so if you guys haven't played ghost ogre before or are kind of just new in general to hand traps most of these hand traps can only activate from hand 
Ghost Spell is a perfect example. It's a card that says when a card or effect is activated that includes any of these effects, you can discard that card and then negate the activation. However, Ghost Ogre is the only Ghost Girl hand trap that lets you activate it from the field as well. e -Telly, not only does it act as an extender for you, it also acts as disruption because on your opponent's turn, you can activate the e -Telly, summon the Ghost Ogre, and now Ghost Ogre is a disruption on the field for you. So that's why I think Ghost Ogre is really, really powerful because it just has multi-purpose and multi use in this deck it's a level three so you can use it as an extender it's a tuner as well so you can actually go into your halka fibrax with this card which is insanely powerful it's a disruption on your opponent's turn and it's just a hand trap at the end of the day you know if you don't win the die roll you end up going second you have a hand trap so this card is insanely powerful that's why there's so many different implications with this ghost spell is also just one of those other budget hand traps even with the reprints ash is still pretty expensive so that's why we're playing the ghost spells but ghost spell is pretty good in this format and then we're playing one reinforcements of the army of course these guys are all warriors so so it gets to, to your silent boots, your torn scales, whatever you need to get into. One foolish burial, sometimes foolish is really important because it gets you any of these names in the graveyard to use their effects. But sometimes foolish is also really good because you can send a Jet Synchron if you don't have access to Halka Fibrax to the graveyard. And then you can use the Jet Synchron as an extender as well, right? So foolish is really good. One called by the grave, of course, to stop hand traps, but called by the grave in general is just really good. Not only is it good to stop hand traps, if your opponent has a tier limit monster in the graveyard, want to activate their effect, you can call by the grave the tier limit monster. It's really powerful. So this card, of course, you want to be playing. Then we're playing playing the Phantom Knight spells and traps. We're playing the one rank up Magic Force. This card is insanely powerful. It's really good for your combo because it gives you access to your Dark Requiem. Dark Requiem is insanely powerful because it's disruptions for you. It, I think provides you with three negates when you combo correctly. So three negates with just this card. So this card is insanely powerful. You have to be playing it. You can always search this card off of your Rusty Bardiche. So this card is insanely powerful. Then we're playing the one Phantom Knight's Wing, the one Phantom Knight's a Shade Brigadine. Shade Brigadine is just an extender for you. We're playing three Fog Blade, which is a disruption for you. And then we're playing one Phantom Knight sword now all the phantom knight traps except for this one so i'll put this one over here but all these phantom knight traps also have an effect in the graveyard where you can banish them and then special summon a phantom knight monster from your graveyard to your side of the field and that's really cool because it gives you a grind game especially in the mid to late game but the also really cool thing about it is if you banish this card to summon another pk monster your torn scales effect in the graveyard will actually activate to summon itself back out to the board so this is an extender for you it's disruption for you this protection for you these cards are so insanely powerful you have to be playing this trap lineup and then we're playing the one jet synchron as well as the one scythe now the thing that i like about playing 42 42 also means there's a less of a chance of drawing these two which is pretty good but yeah these are, you have to be playing because especially in a budget deck like this the fact that you can abuse scythe it's so easy to make this combo so that's why we want to be playing it and that just rounds off the deck so it's 42 cards in the main deck so let's move into the extra deck here we're playing the master flare hyperion and now why would you be playing this card what does this card have to do with pk what are the really weird ways to make this okay well if you guys don't know the Halka Fibrax into TG Wonder Magician Scythe combo. Essentially, that combo gets you into a Baron de Fleur classically because it makes a level 10 synchro for you. But of course, we all know Baron de Fleur at the moment is not a budget card at all. If in fact that card alone would be the entire hundred dollar budget, if not more. So for that reason, you need a budget alternative, and Master Flare Hyperion is here for that reason. Now, Master Flare Hyperion says a tuner plus a non-tuner fairy monster. The really cool thing is you're always going to be using TG Wonder Magician and Artifact Scythe to make this. And TG Wonder magician is a fairy but it doesn't matter because the tuner doesn't need to be a fairy however artifact scythe is a fairy which is really really cool because now you have access to another form of disruption with master flare and it gives you a budget alternative for baron of course it's not a baron negate it doesn't give you a pop every single turn however it's still another form of disruption which is really nice then of course like i said we're playing the one tg wonder magician you go into this with your halka fibrax i've had questions in the past how do you get this combo off essentially you're going to end with a halka fibrax on your side of the field and then the rest of the board doesn't matter you know whether you put up negates disruptions whatever it is that doesn't matter but you have to end on the halka fibrax now on your opponent's turn you can activate the halka Fibrax effect to tag out and summon a synchro monster from your extra deck. So you're going to be summoning the TG Wonder Magician. TG Wonder Magician on summon gets an effect to pop a back row, a spell or trap card. So you're going to be popping your own artifact scythe that is set usually off the deck. That if you draw the scythe, then you can just set the scythe as well. So it still works out, right? And then once you pop the scythe, Scythe will then trigger, summon itself back out, and lock your opponent out of the extra deck. And then you can use TG Wonder Magician, which is a quick effect, to synchro summon, and that's how you're going to get into the Master Flare Hyperion. So anyone who didn't know the combo, that's the quick explanation of the combo, and it's just insanely powerful, right? So then for the Ixies monsters, we're playing the one Dark Requiem. Of course, we make this with the rank up. We're playing the one Arc Rebellion. Arc Rebellion, there's an like OTK combo with this card, so you do want to be playing it. We're playing the one Dark Rebellion, of course. This is the card that you're mostly going to go into after you use your Phantom Knights, especially going second, because you make this, you try to 
to rank up into these and you try to OTK your opponent, which is really nice. We're playing the one Raiders Knight. This card is also really powerful. The two Phantom Knights of Breaksword. This is the only card here that you want to play two of because this card is insanely powerful going first, going second. It also helps set up a lot of your OTK combos into these big dragons, right? So that's why we're playing two. We're playing the one Levier. Levier is really good because especially in the mid to late game, what happens with Levier is that you usually have a lot of your PK monsters banished and this gives you access to those banished monsters back to your side of the field. And then we're playing the one Underworld Goddess. This card is extremely powerful. It helps you out pretty much any other monster that you can't out on your opponent's side of the board. But on top of that, it's also really budget with the reprint now, right? So I would be picking those up now if you could, right? So this card is insanely powerful. It's a very strong card when it just breaks your opponent's board, but it also has a really cool effect in itself. When it's summoned, you negate all the effects of face-up monsters your opponent currently controls. And then if they want to summon something from the graveyard back, you can activate it to negate. So this card is insanely powerful. Then we're playing the one Rusty Bardish, of course, main PK link monster that you're going to be going into. Funny enough, keep this in mind. The traps can also summon this back from the graveyard. A lot of people forget that this card can be summoned back from the graveyard after it's link summoned properly the first time. And then we're playing the one Dagdo, the one Hawk of Fibrax. This is a combo essentially that gets you into Scythe and your whole Scythe lock. And then we're playing the one Cherubini, of course, as well as the one Link Karibo. Link Karibo is mostly for the Jet Synchron because when you do this combo with the Hawk of Fibrax, you summon the Jet Synchron, you can link the Jet Synchron into a Link Karibo, and then you can summon the Jet Synchron back. And then the Jet Synchron plus the Link Karibo makes your Dagda for you. So that's why we want to play the one Link Karibo. That's it for the deck though. It's a 15 card extra deck, as you guys can see, 42 cards in the main deck. The really cool thing about this deck and especially about it being building on a budget is that fact that this is really really competitive if you look at actually the meta pk decks like even the best variants of them they're very similar to this and they might cost way more so the really cool thing about this deck is the fact that you can still use very competitive strategies but also still stay on a budget so you guys should try this out for yourselves for sure because i think this of all the building on our budget decks we've done so far is definitely the most competitive and the most meta relevant. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. The really cool thing about PK is PK is one of the best and most competitive building on a budget decks you guys can find. The fact that it can abuse cards like Scythe super easily and then you can also keep this deck at under $60 is insane. It also gives you a lot of room to play cards like Zeus, cards like Appaloosa and still stay within that $100 budget. Obviously you guys see that I wasn't playing it because I wanted to keep it as small as possible however yes you guys can add those and still be under a hundred dollars which is kind of crazy so if you guys did enjoy make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu Gi Oh content just like this one we upload five days a week here on spanko deck profiles combo videos dual replays all that good stuff you guys are going to see it on the channel we're almost at seven thousand. i wouldn't be here without you guys thank you guys all for watching and with that spanko signing out peace